Welcome to Find It. We are having some technical difficulties. And you know what? When you have a live show, things like this happen. And we had a full moon. I'm blaming it on the stars. And so we do have Lewis Grant Smith with us tonight. But he was having technical difficulties on his side so we decided we needed to bring him in a different way. So luckily I have a producer in the back who has his face on her phone and we may end up having to interview him that way. So I'm gonna tell you, I haven't been doing this that long, but I've had a lot of things go down and I am just trying to roll with it. The universe is testing me. So. With that, I don't know if Lynn's ready to show Lewis Grant Smith's uh, intro, but I will tell you a little bit about him. He's co-authored a book about beating cancer. He has beat cancer. When he was very young, he had cancer and he beat it. And he's going to tell you how he did it. He is a certified nutrition expert and a whole slew of other qualities like John Maxwell certified just a lot. He is an amazing human being. He has a lot of wisdom and knowledge um, and expertise about nutrition and health. So any questions you may have, you can shoot them right into us and he will answer them perhaps by voice, by phone, instead of being right here with us on the show. So with that, I think what we're going to do, if Len is ready... Hey. Hey, Debbie. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you perfectly. Okay. So I told him to give you a call and then I just took a picture of him and I'll have that picture up while you talk to him on the phone live. Oh, so it's just going to be a still picture and then, yeah. and, oh, and then okay. you'll have a picture of him on there. Okay. Okay, okay. guys. This is what so, we got tonight. Yeah. This is what so, we have. So call and him real quick. Okay. So let's go ahead and show Lewis Grant Smith's uh intro look i'm getting feedback though with this being on. no that that'll be fine i just okay. i just got let's it show his intro and lewis will be right back with us yep <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Find It. We are back. I've never done an interview this way and find it. We're finding the will where there's a will, there's a way. And so right now I have Lewis Grant Smith on the phone with us right now. And he I have no idea what's happening right now. I just think that we've already messed this up, so why not just throw some Mary Kay block? I don't know who that is. Um can you put his face on at least? Yes, I'm going to work on that. Okay, so I'll, I'll have that in a minute. Okay, here. so um, what I would love to start with um, is where you were born and raised. Hey, Debbie, first of all, it's a privilege to be on the show with you. Uh, you know, you're an awesome lady, an incredible, incredible inspiration. I've had a look at some of your stuff and just so impressed. And David phoned me one day and he said, Dad, you need to see this lady. She's amazing. So thank you so much. What a privilege to be with you. Sorry about the challenges and, and not being able to get on the internet and that kind of stuff, but it's awesome to be with you. So, Debbie, yeah, I grew up in Africa. As a matter of fact, I used to ride horseback to school, and mm. uh, one of my first languages was a language called Kosa, you know, so I grew up back in Africa in a little rural village on a trading station, and uh, yeah, so many, many years ago, and uh, just beautiful community every weekend down to the beach. We got a lovely beach house in the wild coast of Africa, mm. and so yeah, so that's where I grew up, Debbie. It was actually incredible. Oh, that is amazing. Lewis, can you hear me okay? Perfectly. You sound like you're in the room with me. Oh, good. Oh, good. Uh, Lynn, um, can you hear Lewis? Can you yes, hear I me? can. Perfect. Very, very good. Okay, so I am just amazed by, I've been following you, Lewis, and I am extremely impressed 
with your wisdom, knowledge, and expertise in health and uh, nutrition, especially. Although I do see here where you're certified, you're a certified John Maxwell coach as well. I did not, I did not know that. Exactly. I love John. I love his integrity. I love his heart. I love his wisdom. He's an awesome, awesome leader, such an example of mankind. That is so true. I agree with you 100% on that. You know, a lot of people um, around the world struggle with health, nutrition, fitness. And I feel like it, and I don't know how you feel about this, but I feel like over the years, it's gotten so much worse with diseases. Do you, do you think that's accurate or, or it's always been like this? You know, uh, you are hundred percent right. It's getting worse every single year. According to the CDC, the center for disease control, that within nine years, 171 million Americans will be really heading towards their, ga- their grave through diseases caused by bad lifestyle choices. And uh, so many people are ignorant in understanding that they can do things about their life, but if you don't know what you, to do, there's nothing you can do about it. You know, somebody said to me one day, ignorance is bliss. And I say, no, ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is suffering. You know, uh, how many people are lying in the hospital bed with cholesterol and cardiovascular and uh, diabetic and cancer? And uh, and there's no need for that. If they change a few things in their life, they could beat so many of those diseases out there while working with their oncologist. Well, Lewis, Lewis, the fact of the matter is you actually had cancer at a young age in your 20s. Is that correct? That's right. Do you know what happened, Debbie? I was 26 years old. I was so sick. I was losing weight by the day. Uh, and I said to my wife, uh, before I go to a doctor, I'm going to quickly go and get your life policy. Uh, uh, so that if when I die, I've got these two little kids, one in diapers, one just out of diapers, uh, only been married for a few years. And I said, I'm going to go and get a life policy. If I ever die, there's actually some money for you. And I went to go and get this life policy. And you know what they do? They test your blood. They discovered I have leukemia. And I I fought at the medical way for five years. And after five years of torture, of in and out of hospitals, of so much blood taken out my arms that eventually take it out my legs, Uh, life wasn't worth living with all the suffering and the side effects of the drugs and the medication. After five years, I sent home to die. And that was when my life really changed. So you're telling me that you went the medical route and with this cancer diagnosis, had so much blood removed from your body that they ended up having to take it out of your legs. And they basically said, you know, we've really done all that we can do. You're in and out of hospitals, all the treatments. And then what did you do, Lewis? Well, Debbie, and it's even a bit worse than that. The medications I was taking destroyed my liver, destroyed my kidneys. By the time I was 32, they wanted to give me a kidney transplant. Uh, fortunately for me, praise God, I was too sick to have the kidney transplant. But guess what happened? At the age of 31, I met somebody. Uh, you know, I discovered how gracious God was. And I was a Christian already, but um, I didn't realize that God created a, a body that could heal itself if we gave it the environment to heal itself. So anyway, here I am, I'm sent home to die, and I meet this friend, I'm having this pretty party, me, myself, and I was mad at everybody, mad at the world, mad at God, because I wanted to see my kids grow up, I wanted to stay married to my beautiful bride, and um, that is when God sent somebody across my path and taught me, the body is a healer, change your lifestyle, change your life. And he started sending me some things to study. And one of the things was uh, a study came out of Australia showing that law detergents, softeners, and bleaches of some of the biggest cancer-causing products on planet Earth. We've all got them in our homes. And then I started researching, and I discovered that there's 13,000 chemicals in the cosmetic industry. And anyway, so the more I researched, the more I'm blown away that I was alive. Debbie, you see, I used to love white bread. I didn't know that white flour is brown flour, bleached white, and bleach could antagonize cancer. Then I started eating brown bread. I didn't know that 
brown bread is brown flour, bleach white, and then dyed brown. And so I used to love barbecue. Who would ever think that one piece of barbecued meat could be equal to smoking 40 cigarettes and cancer carcinogens? I love toast. Who would ever think that one slice of toast uh, could be equal to uh, smoking 20 cigarettes and cancer carcinogens? Anyway, so I started changing things in my life. The more I researched, the more uh, blown I was away that I, that I was still alive. I, we ate margarine because our doctor said you need to stop eating butter, eat margarine. I didn't know that margarine was only mo one molecule from uh, plastic or petroleum. And so I started changing so many things in my life. I, I still love bacon. Who would ever think that if you ate 20 slices of bacon uh, in, in, a, in, in 90 days, it could increase leukemia count by quite a few hundred percent. I could eat 20 slices of bacon a day. So anyway, so I started changing these things. And I also, you know, I changed my, my soaps. Uh, we stopped burning candles in the house because they're full of toxins. Uh, we stopped using poisonous laundry detergent, poisonous dishwashing soap. We stopped using poisonous body soap. I remember when I turned my toothpaste over and it said on the back, if you get this into your body, rush to your poison center. I mm -hmm. thought, what? How can they sell people mm. with children, uh, you know, poisonous toothpaste? I was teaching my little four-year-old how to brush his teeth. Anyway, so I, I started changing all these things in my life. And one of the things I really changed was my supplements as well. But I only started eating organic and I started juicing. And, well, a year I am today, 64, vibrant, healthy, no sign of cancer. And I've been cancer. I haven't, we don't even have a doctor. We, I, I've got no medical doctor, anything like that. So by changing what you put on top of your body, by what you wash your clothes in and by the, the lotions and all of the things that you used to use and changing your diet, you were able to heal your body healed itself is what you're telling us. Isn't that just incredible? It, it's almost like it, it, you're right. Like God gave us these bodies that are so amazing and I think that somehow over the years, we've just gotten so far away from the natural way of taking care of ourselves. Debbie, you're so 100% right. You know, we've got to the time in, in the world where we just believe if it comes from the uh, drugstore, it's good for you. If you're buying it at a health food store, it's good for you. you don't, we don't realize that everybody's in just to make some money. And so mm -hmm. you have to get to the stage where you have to test everything. Like, I never forget the day when I discovered the vitamin E I was taking was made from turpentine. And then, and turpentine is a paint stripper. It's not a human food. And so I started researching how to find a good product or how to find good soap. And I've been doing that now for about 34 years. Oh my gosh. Now I don't understand how turpentine can be in any product that's sold in the United States. That's what, how did they get away with that? Do you even know that? You know, Debbie, because it can even be organic because it comes out of a tree. It's a, it's a plant extract. Oh, so okay. Organic. So how do you know the difference between vitamin E and turpentine? Turpentine will just say alpha tocopherol. Now, if it's made from a petroleum or some synthetic ingredient, it will say DL alpha tocopherol, DB lethal alpha tocopherol. But if it's got all four tocopherols and all four tocotrienols, you now know it's made from food. And it, it even gets worse than that. You take beta carotene. If you go and Google the Finnish cancer study, where that took about 29,000 people and they gave them beta carotene, and this increased cancer growth by 18% and increased heart attacks by 18%, then nobody even gets told about it. I saw baby food the other day with with uh, with beta carotene in. Uh, you know, there's so I saw so many protein shakes with beta carotene in. So what should you look for? You should make sure it's got all 15 families of carotenoids. Now you know it's a human whole food. Yeah. So the key is being able to take supplements that are made from whole from food from natural sources. Exactly. You know, you take, uh, you, and, and natural, I'm even worried with the word natural. Let's take flavonoids. You might have heard the word flavonoid. This really shocked me because I was taking flavonoids. But the flavonoid I was taking was made from pine bark. I didn't know that the pine bark of a pine tree is a barrier God put between the critter and the edible tree trunk. 
So you put this uh, pine bark, you take a handful of pine bark and throw it into a fish tank, the, the fish tank, the fish will all die because it's toxic. And so that is what they're using to make flavonoids. Now, flavonoids are awesome for you if they're juice extracted, dehydrated, organically grown, non-GMO, vine ripened, whole human foods. So absolutely. So how how do the like I'm not schooled and I'm not an expert in nutrition. So how does the lay person who wants to be healthy and makes all I mean, you know, you work out, you buy, you know, the foods that you think are good for you and then only to find out it isn't. How can we um, what can we look for when we're at the store or whatever in order to know? what we're getting. I mean, how do we, how can you do that in this? <laughs> can you do that in like a few minutes? I don't even know. Debbie, you are such an awesome lady. You've got such good questions. I'm sitting here and I'm saying, man, you and I could become friends. I love you. <laughs> I like you too. That's why I asked you to be on my show. <laughs> Thank you so much, Debbie. What a privilege. Debbie, the, do you know what label reading is so simple? People phone me all the time. Let's talk about food before we even talk about vitamins. People say, hey, how do I know what, what should be on the label? I said, if it's got a label on it, it shouldn't be in your regular cupboard. It should be in your emergency cupboard when the world comes to an end and you need to find some food. The stuff in your cupboard that you use every day should be, you know, about tomato. The only thing I want to see on the tomato should say PLU number nine because nine means it was grown with uh, non-GMO seed. Nine means it was grown with out using NPK, which is synthetic fertilizer made from gasoline. Nine means that they didn't use systemic pesticides. So uh, in my house, 99% of my food's got no label on it. It's fresh, organic food. And that's how we cook. Grass-fed meat, no label on the packaging because I go to the rancher and I get it directly from the rancher. So I'm telling you this because now we're going to talk about supplements. There's only four things, only four things you have to know when you're reading a supplement label. I often get into Whole Foods and I stand at the vitamin while my wife's shopping and I sit there and I watch these poor people drooling because they don't know how to buy. They pick up the calcium. I remember this lady buying a bottle of calcium and I went to her I said, why did you buy that one? Oh, she said, it's the cheapest one. I said, no, it's not the cheapest one. I said, first of all, it's made from dolomite. Dolomitic based calcium cause kidney stones, gall stones, bone spurs, all that. Kind. Secondly, it's not chelated and if a calcium is not chelated, uh, you, you'll only get about an 8% absorption rate instead of an 82% absorption rate. I said, get something that your body goes into your bloodstream. So I said, so, so I sat with her and I said, yeah, I can teach you in five minutes how to buy any supplement on planet Earth. Only, it only takes about five minutes. Number one is, is it made from human organic food? This is so vital, Debbie, because if it's not made from food, what's it made from? You know, people are taking pond slime, and they, which is a junior Salina, which is a type of antioxidant. They're taking pine bark. They're taking sea moss. These are things that are taking krill oil. These are not foods that your parents or your grandparents ate. It should be made from organic food that your parents ate, that your grandparents ate, and your great-grandparents ate. And it will say it somewhere on the label. It will show a picture that this is made from these things. That's the first thing. The second thing it should say somewhere, right, that is produced under pharmaceutical license. Now, I know some people are going to throw some bricks at me and say, I don't take pharmaceutical products. I don't take them either. Now, look, I do. If a bus drove over me, I'm going to go and take some medication and I'm going to go to the hospital to be sewn up. But what am I going to tell you right now? If I've got a disease or a health issue, that's related to bad lifestyle choices. Like I haven't followed the nine best doctors, Dr. Sleep, Dr. Exercise, Dr. Water, Dr. Air, Dr. Fun, Dr. Laughter, Dr. Food, you know, those uh, Dr. Sleep, all, all that kind of stuff. So you want to make sure that you learn the nine best doctors out there. So if I've got a disease or a health issue, let's say, for example, diabetes or cancer or cardio, which could be very much related to bad lifestyle choices, while working with my oncologist, I'm going to take a supplement that's produced under pharmaceutical license. Because if it's produced under pharmaceutical license, it means what's on the label is in the product. Now, this is so vital. Hmm. I don't know if you saw that study by New York State that 
the the uh, the herbs they tested, Ginkgo biloba, St. John's wort, whatever they tested had zero percent of what was on the label label in the product. A study only just came out a few weeks ago that elderberry, 68% of elderberry had 0% of the what was on the label in the product. I don't know if you saw the study by Bloomberg News that aloe vera, 0% of the aloe vera they tested had any aloe vera. It had no trace of aloe vera. In it. So anyway, so that's why I'm a fanatic. Number one, it should be made from food. Number two, it should have a pharmaceutical licensing. In other words, all produced under pharmaceutical license, guaranteeing label integrity. Number three, uh, it needs to have third-party human clinical trials. Like I take an antioxidant every day. It's incredible. It's called a Gorotno complex. And what I love about this product, Debbie, is that it's had human clinical trials done by five universities across the USA. And what they discovered, if you took three of these antioxidants, a day, which is made from juice extracts, organically grown food, it will increase your body's ability to boost the immune system by 37%, increase your body's ability to uh, increase your natural killer cells, which detects and kills disease before it attacks the body by 20%, which slows down aging of your brain, your liver, and your kidneys, and your pancreas, and your heart, heart down by 44%, slow down the aging of your body by 44%, and increase your body's ability to fight uh, cholesterol and cardiovascular disease by 500%. So, so wow. As it is. So, so I say to people, make sure if you're going to take a supplement that has actually been human clinical trials that were so mind boggling that they were published in medical journals. This is vital if you're going to, if you're going to buy some of your hard earned money and you're going to put it in your body. You want to make sure it's not going to harm you, but actually going to help you. And the last thing to look for was it put in medical journals. So is it made from food? Is it produced in such a way that you can trust the ingredients on the label in the product? Has it got a human clinical trial done by a third-party company? And were this trial so unbelievable that they were published in medical journals? And you're able to look at a label and be able to get this information? If it's not, yes, because first of all, the first thing you're looking for on the, on the label is do they have a seal of accountability? Can I trust the manufacturer? Uh, and the only certain seals out there, and that's what I love to teach people. If we were, uh, we might have to do this again one day when everybody can see me because I can show them what a label looks like. Okay. Yeah, I think everybody that's watching would agree. We need to do it again where you are on the screen. You can hold up products. You can... I think it makes more of an impact, but yes. Okay. So, so continue what you were saying. I'm sorry. Oh, that's great. Debbie. It's just great being with you. It's such an honor. And a Thank you. But, yeah. So Debbie, so yes, if you buy a product, when you're looking on the label, the first thing you're looking for, it must say somewhere that it's made from human food. That's the first thing. The second thing, what you're looking for, or you put a picture of the food it's made from. That's the first thing. The second thing now you're looking for, was there any kind of seal on there? And there's quite a few seals out there, but you have to realize something. Let's take, for example, um, oh, gracious me, let me get this seal out in front of me over here on um, – protein shakes there's a protein shake out there i don't know if you uh, uh nature's nature's come on come on come on come on you know i do all these things all the time there you are okay i've got it in front of me okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, and and uh, so so when you uh, uh, maybe i shouldn't say the name on the show so basically what i'm going to say there's a protein shake out there it's got four organic seals on it four organic seals and the study just showed that it's the most toxic protein shake uh, in this study out of 134 brands tested. So organic doesn't mean the product is good. It, if there's 20 ingredients in there and four or five of them organic, it can say it's organic. Oh, so I was going to ask how they can get away with putting a seal that says organic if it isn't. Yes, and you see they're not lying because some of them are organic. So they're 100% right. There's some products out in there that are organic, and there's some products out there that are not organic. And so th this is what is so heartbreaking about this whole thing. If you're buying something, you, you let, let's take the example. Here's something I can just mention to you quickly. Have you ever heard of Mary Rue's uh, supplements? Say that again. 
Ma Mary Ruth. They, they Mary were, Ruth's. No. Yeah, Mary Ruth Organics. Um, you know, two independent labs just found that they'd hidden back, that they had bacteria in these products. And that's not the problem. Mary Ruth's took 19 months before they recalled the stuff. Mm. So, and, and they are a really good company. If, you know, if I'm going to take a supplement, that's one of the best out there. But when I see this kind of stuff, if you find your product's got bacteria in it and it's a probiotic, a probiotic you want to take it off the market straight away. So, uh, because it could be harming people's guts. So anyway, hmm. uh, and you, if you look at this study here on collagen, where they discovered 64% of collagen, the study was done by Organic Consumers Association, 64% of the collagen sold in the world had got arsenic in it, and 100% had mercury in it. Now, when you think collagen, uh, arsenic and mercury are just toxic things, they shouldn't be in, uh, in collagen, because collagen is especially there to help you fight cancer and things like that. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Your body makes its own collagen. If you give your body about uh, five nutrient families, your body can make its own collagen. But what are those? Can you, I mean, do you know that off the top of your head? What oh, yes. food, what foods, five foods, eat, you're saying five different things in combination with one another will help your body naturally produce its own co collagen. Exactly. You've got a little collagen factory inside you that's pumping it all. Oh, up. let's pump it up. How do we do it? Tell us, how do we pump that collagen up? I'm excited. Okay. okay, so the first thing is you need to give your body at least 20 amino acids of the 22. There's 22 vital amino acids out there. You want to give your body 20 at least of those, right? That's the first thing you're wanting to do because that's like building a house. The foundation of make, putting collagen out is your amino acids. The foundation of the house is what holds the house up. Now, what else has to go on? It needs all eight vitamin E's. This is so vital. Eight? Uh, there's eight vitamin E's? Yeah, there's four tocopherols and four tocotrees. <laughs> And if you're taking a vitamin E that's only got one of them, it's not a food vitamin E. I don't know what it is, right? And so uh, you want to make sure you're getting all eight vitamin E's. Then you want to be getting all the, the vitamin C families like rosehip and cherry extract and all that kind of stuff. So that's the next one you want to add to it. Okay. Right. I, the, I'm... The, the, the next one you want to add is minerals. Minerals are so important. And then there's 15 families of, of carotenoids. And that will make up the foundation for your body uh, to be able to make collagen. So uh, that, that product you take in, Debbie, I think it's called Pro Vitality. Are you, I'm sure you're on that. I am. I get it every single month shipped to me. It's called, what did I get? Pro, Pro Vitality. <laughs> Pro Vitality. That's what it is. And I like it that they're all packaged for me so I can grab a pack and take it with my lunch all together and I don't have to think about it. I don't have to know, you know, you've already done the research, so I know it's good. But you know what I want to try? I want to be able to take, I want to do a before and after, after doing all the natural things I need to do to boost my collagen and see if I can tell a difference in the, the hydration of my skin. The, do you think if I do, how long, and so are there, Capsules that are combined, like let's say the vitamin E that you're talking about, like there's multiple vitamin E's, you need them all in order for it yeah. to work efficiently. So you're able to get like one capsule that has them all in there or you have to take them separately? You get one capsule that's got all eight uh, vitamin E's, four tocophilus, four tocotrienols. It's in one capsule. I take two of those capsules every day. Okay. Debbie, sign me up. Oh, I will. Okay. We've got, a uh, we've got someone who wants to sign up, but you know, the thing is I'm just learning about all of this and I, by following you and listening to you and reading what you, what you've done, Lewis, it's helping me understand, but I got to be honest, like it is very difficult for me, even though I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm intelligent, but like, there's so much to know, but then I feel like when you explain it, it it's like, no, it's really not that hard. You just have to eat not, you know, what's comes up from the earth without all the stuff sprayed on it and and all the additives, right? 
Yes. Now, so let's talk about food for a second. Right next to me, I've got a vegetable juice I'm finishing up for the day. And in that vegetable juice, I've got cabbage, red cabbage. I've got green cabbage because it's full of antioxidants, full of enzymes for the gut. I've got turmeric because it's uh, anti-inflammatory. I've got uh, ginger because it's uh, it's just wonderful, packed with electrolytes for the brain, clarity of thought. I've got yellow beets and beet leaves, which they detox the blood. I've got the red beets uh, because they boost your immune system. I've got in there a lot of lemon to clean out the fats and clean out the cardiovascular system and detox the body. Uh, so I've got a little bit of carrots. I've got a little bit of green apples. I've got broccoli. I've got cilantro in there because it carries out heavy metals. Uh, I've got curly leaf kale in there because it's full of minerals. So so I've got this right next to me, Debbie, and I do what we call intermittent fasting. I break the fast with the protein in the morning at about 10.30. And this has really increased my clarity of thought. It's increased mm. my energy. So I don't do breakfast. My breakfast is ready at 10.30. And then I do a, a shake, and then I have a, a salad and that about three hours later. Then we have dinner at about 6 o'clock. So that's how my day goes. But I want to tell you that even though I do all that kind of stuff, but everything I do is organic and cook from scratch, I, I take extra supplements. Let me tell you why. Right in front of me, I've got a study done on spinach. And over a 50-year period, the nutrient value in spinach has dropped by 60%. That means you'd have to eat 300% more spinach today than your parents ate to get the same nutrient value. So you say, well, that's bad. I'll eat oranges. Well, in this study in front of me, if you ate one orange in 1980, today you'd have to eat two, four, six, eight oranges to get the same nutritional value. What's so going you, on? Why? I'm going to answer that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Keep me on my toes here, right? So, so let's, here's an apple study. Did you know if you ate one apple in 1950, today you'd have to eat 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26 apples to get the same nutrient? And the reason being, and you know, we get taught eat an apple a day keeps the doctor away. There's a whole bunch Now of eat a bushel. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, Debbie. So, uh, so, so what has actually happened? A whole bunch of things. Uh, land has become so expensive. There's so many people to feed. Farmers are competing around the world to get the biggest, most beautiful product to the end consumer for the cheapest price possible. And so they've turned to synthetic fertilizers. And synthetic fertilizers are made from NPK. When was this invented? At the end of the Second World War, some scientists in the USA discovered that you could turn a petroleum products into fertilizer and the plant would give you a beautiful food that which is about no nutritional value and so uh, so so this is a heartbreaking thing you're getting this mm. beautiful food that's got just about no nutritional value in it the second thing what happened by utilizing this petroleum based fertilizer uh this is what happened uh, we destroyed the soil we killed all the living a bacteria that in the soil, so it couldn't carry on functioning without the synthetic fertilizer. So, you know, mm. it's like creating a vicious cycle. I then see. Get, but, uh, after that, we then put systemic pesticide. Now, systemic pesticide is when you put the pesticide into the plant. You can't wash it off. You can't peel it off. It's inside the plant. And so these are things that you really have to learn and uh, to and to understand uh so maybe sometime we, we can do a workshop where i can actually bring slides up on my screen and i can show people all these different things on how to read labels and uh you know how yeah. to know if it's uh, certified if it's organic and that's very simple if you're gonna buy a vegetable it should have a plu number of nine on it nine is fine just remember that. nine is fine if it has a nine on it it's not with systemic chemicals and pesticides exactly it's, you're a sharp learner i am hey, i want you know what we all invest so much time and energy in our health and then you only to find out that the things that you're eating that you think are healthy for your body really are not necessarily now i will say this i have a question about this like i always you know i was taught a long time ago you should shop the perimeter of the grocery store and try to stay out of the middle lanes because that's where most of the, you know, the 
the processed foods are in boxes and cans and bags. Um, but what it like, let's be real. When was the last time you've had like Cheez-Its? Have you ever had Cheez-Its? <laughs> I like those. And I, I, I know they're not good for me, but I mean, like, have you, do you have cheat days? Do you ever eat anything except organic, natural, yummy from the earth? Yeah. Let me give you an idea, Debbie. I'll, I've just come back from an eight-week vacation in the Caribbean. And uh, and we were staying at these beautiful hotels, and they were serving ice cream. And I know how you make ice cream. They put antifreeze in ice cream. Oh, my gosh. And, and antifreeze. Now, I make my own homemade ice cream at home. But when I'm out traveling, I do eat some of this garbage. And I had some ice cream. <laughs> and my wife says... <laughs> Uh, so, so, sorry, somebody took a video of me having it. They said, we're going to put that for the whole world to see. Louis Smith eating poisonous ice cream. So because because <gasps> my friends know me, I'm a total fanatic. I try not to eat these things. But they put the antifreeze in the ice cream so that if you buy it at the store and it goes home, it's not going to defrost. And if it's frozen, you can scoop it out. Remember there was a time, Debbie, if you scooped out ice cream, you'd bend the spoon? Yeah. No, you don't bend the spoon, spoon anymore because they put antifreeze in it. But and that's then, poisonous. Exactly. But, yeah. but, po but I don't, how did, they, I don't understand, that is mind boggling to me. I mean, antifreeze that you put in your car is what you're talking about. That's right. Well, it, it's, it's related. Okay. So it's not the exact same thing, but it's of in the family of that. Yes. And Debbie, do you know how I found this out? I moved to America about 12 years ago and my daughter had been studying across here. And so I was staying with her the first few days while we were busy getting our life under control. And she says, Dad, your first night in America, let's go to house church. So I said, all right, we went to house church. I was really exhausted. And we, at the end, the pastor broke us into couples and said, pray to the pray, uh, to the person I point out. And he put me with another elderly gentleman. And I went, I said, what must I pray about? He said, uh, please pray that I can get better. I have just come out of intensive care because I ate ice cream and had antifreeze. Oh. So... So the next day, I'm doing a talk in Merced, California, and I'm, I'm, I am had all these young college students there, and I'm, I'm laughing. I said, you can't believe I met a senile old man yesterday, and he said they put antifreeze in ice cream. And these college students start laughing. So I said, what are you laughing at? <laughs> so uh, they said that uh, they studying uh, to become scientists, and they're working at the ice cream factory, and they couldn't believe that they put antifreeze in ice cream, and that one of the flavorings they use is a paint stripper. They use a paint stripper as a, as a vanilla flavoring. And so, uh, and I couldn't believe it, so they sent me some of the information, and it's just mind-boggling. But I must tell you what happened, Debbie. <laughs> Maybe it's not a good place to tell about this, but this is, I was speaking in Venice to a few thousand people, and been translated into many languages across Europe. And um, in Venice that day, I saw that people in Venice love ice cream. So I said, uh, do you know how they make the organic flavorant for organic vanilla ice cream? And I said, they milk the anal of a male beaver. Can you imagine that? <laughs> so when it sounds like some kind of sick joke. <laughs> yes, exactly. And now I was speaking to all these Italians and I, I lost them. They started making a real noise. And then they get out their iPhones and their smartphones to check me up. And suddenly they realize I'm telling the truth. Well, have you ever seen a room with thousands of noisy Italians? They just went crazy. And uh, so it took about 10 minutes to get them to quieten down again. But to me, it's craziness. It Why not you choose the vanilla bean? You know, just paint right. a bit more. Something everybody's trying to do the cheapest, most trashiest thing and keep the world ignorant. And that's just heartbreaking. Right. And so what I want everyone to understand, <clears throat> too, like Lewis has been all over the world speaking. He knows he's done his research. This isn't something that's just him making this up because it does sound really bizarro land and it doesn't seem possible that some of these things can happen in our own food in the United States of America. But, you know, um, you know, you all can think and check it out on your own, but I am going to have Lewis back for sure when he can be on the screen and show some things, um, like he said, because I think it's really important for us to be educated about what we're putting in our bodies. You know, we're, we exercise, we try to be healthy and we really need to be, 
you know, know the real deal about what we're, we're putting and ingesting and what we're eating. And, um, I think it's super important. And I, I am definitely interested. Let me ask you this, Lewis. Um, you know, uh, right around COVID time, a lot of people were really pushing, like taking certain supplements and minerals and whatever to boost your immune system. And I think zinc was one of them. In your opinion or your professional opinion with what types of vitamins and minerals should we take to boost our immune system regularly? Well, first of all, I want to talk about the zinc thing. Zinc is incredible. It's one of the only things in the world that can cause flu germs to become sterile. Hmm. But this is where the problem is. Because people don't know how to read a label. Nearly all the zinc in the world is galvanized metal, galvanized iron which can cause pollocks and diverticulitis and colon cancer and intestinal cancer. You don't, and, but the problem is it can take up to 18 years before this cancer develops and all these problems because the stuff doesn't rust. It just sits in your gut forever. It's like taking iron. It's the same thing. So if you're going to take a zinc, or if you're going to take an iron or calcium or mineral, it should be made from food. This is a key or magnesium. It should be made from human food. Absolutely vital. So, to answer your question, baby, yes, zinc is awesome. But if, if I put them in levels of important, number one is the product that's been published globally in peer-reviewed medical journals that can boost your immune system by up to 37% and increase your natural killer cells by 20%. I always say the, your immune system and your natural killer cells is like your air force and your military combined in taking out the enemy. And so and that is a product that's got 15 families of carotenoids in there. It's an absolute incredible product. can increase your body's ability to produce about 600 different kind of antioxidants. So that's the first thing I would take uh, is a carotenoid. The second thing I'll take would be a great vitamin C. The third thing I'll take to boost the immune system is to get the gut right. 70 to 80% of the health starts in the intestinal tract. And a lot mm. of people are taking probiotics, yeah. but they don't. Us, nearly every probiotic in the world is a placebo. As a matter of fact, when you're taking a probiotic, there's about four things to look for. Number one is, did the manufacturer produce it in an oxygen-free factory? Because if there's any oxygen in there, it could have bacteria in the product, which could harm your body and give you tummy problems, all that kind of stuff. The second thing, it needs to make sure that they put the prebiotic in the capsule with the probiotic, because that product is a living thing. Now, it's going to be sent from the store uh, I mean, to, from the factory to the store to your house, and it might take six months to a year to get to your house. Well, there's very little chance of it still being alive oh. if it didn't put in the container. Yeah. So it should have a prebiotic in the capsule with the probiotic to keep it alive. The next thing of it needs to be enteric coated, released in the cecum of the large intestine. Because if probiotics are released in the stomach or the small intestine, the pH of the gut is too harsh it will kill that probiotic and now you now so you're not delivering anything you're wanting and lastly it needs to be gel coated what does that mean that means when it gets released in the cecum of the large intestine it releases a little bit as it goes through each part of the colon over the next three hours that means we'll spread evenly through the, the, the colon, allowing probiotics to be spread in all the different compartments. Anyway, so the third one would be a, a decent probiotic. The next thing I would definitely say to boost your immune system is a, is a protein shake. Now, why do I say protein shake? Mm -hmm. If you're taking, uh, if, you, if you're trying to get your immune system up, remember protein is the foundation of health. Now, the problem with protein only stays in your body for 24 to 30 hours. Every 24 to 30 hours, you need to replace those that protein in the body so um and also so protein if you want to if you want oxygen to circulate you want, to, you want to, uh, the the you don't want the protein to uh attach to the eye uh, to the iron and to the e to help it circulate you want to digest food there's two thousand digestive enzymes uh, just in the protein family if you want to produce collagen you need the foundation of protein so protein is a foundation for health and most people are not getting the the, the right proteins if you take avocados is one of the best forms of proteins out there the problem is that the avocados in this country are harvested way too early they then uh er they ripen with radiation and they, they could be months old by the time you get them so what am I saying is you 
what protein is in that product. We discovered when I was at a tomato farm in Africa, if you picked a tomato three days before you should, you could lose up to 80% of the nutritional value. Now, our son avocados in this country are picked a month before they should be picked. So, uh, so anyway. Well, so they sure don't, they sure die quickly when I buy them. I feel like avocados, it's like they're, they're a little solid and I'm going to wait for them to ripen. And then all of a sudden they're poopy. <laughs> And, and you know why? Because they irradiate it. And oh, if you irradiate an avocado, it ripens within two or three days. Now, if that same avocado, if you bought it directly from the farm and you didn't irradiate it, it might take two, three months to ripen. And wow. how do I, I come from avocado farming area in Africa, and we buy the next to the road, and you can take an avocado home and you can keep it for a month or two before it starts ripening. And that's because of... Um, it, they, they haven't been irradiated. Another way they ripen avocados is with ethyl. Now, I'm not saying don't eat them. I eat avocados every day. I had a salad with my avocado this morning. And it's a great thing. It's good oil for the brain. It's an incredible nutrient. But all I was saying is if you're trying to get the nutrient into your body and the food we're eating has been manipulated for our convenience, uh, then we're changing the nutritional value that's available to our body. That's correct. I get that, that, that you're, it's still the avocado is still nourishing your body. It's just not giving you the quality or the amount that it would have had it not had been pushed through the system to hurry, hurry, sell more, that type thing. Um, I had a question about what was it? Oh, what, is there anything, you know, you hear like, oh, eat carrots. It helps eyesight. Is there anything? Cause like now I've been having to use these readers. I'm not real excited about it. Is there anything that we can do to help our eyesight naturally? Absolutely. Uh, you know, your eyes, you might have heard eat carrots, as you, as, you, as you mentioned. The problem with eating a carrot, you only get about 10% of the nutrition out of it. 90% goes on the toilet because the fibers <laughs> are very difficult for humans to digest. But if you juice that carrot, you get about 90% of the oh, nutrition. Okay. All right. And if you're going to buy carrots, you want to remember something. You want to make sure that they're not baby carrots because then they're normally coated in chlorine or bleach, which could mess up your gut. If your gut's not right, then you can't fight diseases. So don't eat baby carrots. And the other thing over here, if you're going to buy carrots, they should have the leaves on the end. We said they don't have the leaves on the end. They're normally soaked in budnip, and budnip is so toxic uh, that they're not allowed to use on animal food. They can only use on human food. Anyway, so to answer your question, Debbie. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just, um, I just can't believe that. I mean, honestly, like I know you've also, I've heard you and uh, before speak about really washing our produce really well. Exactly. I mean, exactly. it's to get all of the the ick off of it and and all of that. But um, I don't know. I just, I had a, I had a, a bunch of questions for you. But what I would like to now about meat. Let's talk about meat real quick, and then I'm going to wrap this up. But like, I have, I, I recently had gone to not having red meat and not actually not having chick. I'm just doing fish, but I have implemented eggs back into my diet because I, I wasn't getting enough protein. So yes. when you buy meat, though, yes. how do you? What is your suggestion on that? Okay, so let me quickly finish your eyes. Sorry, I went off track. Okay, you okay. I'm so carried away because there's so much to teach, and I yeah. just love powering people. Uh, so, so, Debbie, for your eyes, the best nutrient in the world for eyes is carotenoid, and there's 15 families of carotenoids out there. And if you if you can get an antioxidant with all 15 families in, you're, that is made from organic food. It is incredible for your eyes, for glaucoma, for bad night vision, for cataracts, uh, for weak eyes, sore eyes. It's absolutely incredible. And I know um, uh, it's in the Pro Vitality. It's a black tablet in there. Oh, but I've been know, taking that. <laughs> I need yeah. But you need to be taking about at least nine a day of those. Oh, okay. Uh, if you want to uh, try and get a result in a certain area. That's the first thing. The, the next thing that your question was, uh, I just want to quickly recap. You're trying to boost that immune system. It is uh, garlic is a very good immune booster. Uh, zinc is a great immune booster. 
carotenoids, vitamin C, uh, protein shakes. Those are very important things to and the probiotics to boost that immune system. Now we're talking about meat. Great, great question. Uh, Debbie, I believe there's nothing wrong with red meat. The, the key with this red meat thing is it should be gra grass-fed, grass-finished. It should be pasture-raised all the way through. You don't want it to have be eaten corn or any genetically modified. You don't want it to be pumped with female hormones, um, estrogen, all this kind of stuff. You don't want it to have eaten pesticides and chemicals. So uh, grass, uh, so what I do, Debbie, um, I know ranchers in the area, and I buy a, a, a half a cow, two of us share half a cow. I bring it home, we get it all cut up, I make my own sausage, I do everything from scratch. I make my own jerky, all that kind of stuff. Then I know exactly what seasoning, everything I'm putting there from scratch I'm doing myself. So, um, but if you go to Whole Foods and if you're buying fish, your best fish is wild-caught salmon. Coho is the best. And then halibut's another very good fish. Uh, but I love coho. It's, your, it's the shortest living fish in the world. And because of that, it's got the least pesticides in it mm. uh, to any any kind of fish out there and chemicals. Also, it's got the best salmon oil because it stays in the North Pole its whole life. So coho is good. Uh, red meat, uh, red lamb from New Zealand is very good. New Zealand and Australia are very good countries to get lamb from uh, because they uh, – Really, they outback farming. They don't do all the inoculation that we do in small land farming like we do in the USA. And the red meat, if you go to Whole Foods and you buy grass-fed, grass-finished or pasture-raised, uh, those are those are is the red meat. And if you're buying eggs, it should be free, uh, not free-range. It needs to be pasture-raised eggs. Pasture raised eggs. So, um, what what can you do for our listeners if they have questions? I'm gonna. I really, if you would, I really do want to have you back on again. Um, yes, I want to. Mickey, keep that up there. Mickey Dunkel. Um, we do have dress back farms uh, locally. So, for the listeners who are local. If you have an interest in getting non-GMO and hormone-free beef, Dressbuck Farms does this. They they do it the right way. So um, it's available to you there. Thank you, Mickey, for that reminder. I'm so glad you tuned in tonight. Um, so I know that I want you to come back on, but what if the if our listeners would like to reach out and learn more, or they have a specific question, or they want to know what type of vitamins to take, how can they reach you, Lewis? Okay, so Debbie, um, I do approximately nine free consultations a day for people, that people can get hold of me and have a chat. I, straight after this, I'm going to send you a link. Okay. And if you can post that link somewhere, uh, that any person who wants to have a consultation with me, the only thing they must put on there that they met me through you. Okay. So um, when I post the link, um, anyone who has an interest in asking Lewis a specific question and have a consultation with him, you can use that link, but mention that you saw him on this show. D is this a free service or... It's a free service. I do it. I do about nine a day for people, and so they just go and they. It's on on Zoom. Just go to Zoom. They just have to download Zoom on their phone or their computer, and I give it. Uh, you can do it. Have as many as you like. As that as is you amazing. I'm so happy that you're you're doing that for us. Thank you so much, and I will definitely put that link. So whoever's listening, I will add the link. And um, what a great resource, you know? I mean, he's a wealth of knowledge and we all want to be healthier. So why not? Well, I will tell you, Lewis, um, this was an unconventional way to do our show tonight, but we made it happen. And I am so grateful to you to just wing it on the phone. <laughs> De so. Debbie, if you'd like, I'll... I'll FaceTime him. I got my camera working and he can at least wave to everybody. So he Okay, knows. so we're going to put, I'm going to hang up with you and, and she's going to FaceTime you and then you can just wave to the crowd, okay? And I'll call you, I'll call you, okay. Lewis. Okay. She's going to call you now, Lewis. You guys, I'm telling you, 
Like, I am so excited. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a trial test with the. Okay, hold on. I'm going to do a test where I do what he says about wait, wait, me naturally wait, building wait, my on. collagen. I'm going to be like, look how gorgeous. Look at my skin. Wait, hold, I'm going to do on. it, you guys. So hold um, on, I'm get oh, I'm getting my on. camera back on. Okay, I'm taking, I got to take him off for here. All this technical stuff here. Hold on. Yeah, oh, we get it's him. been one heck of a ride. Hello, hi. Whoops. Oh. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. Hey, Louis, thank you so much. So at least we got a wave to you. I'm gonna let you go. Let me. Um, I'll be looking for the link, Louis. And I will post that, lift him up a little bit, Lynn. And yeah. I will um, be in touch with you. I was I trying will... to get him close to the speaker so he could talk to you. Yeah. So I will oh, yeah. um, try I to get. Can, they can't hear me. Now they, now I can hear you. They can hear you. I, I can talk a lot. Hey, folks, thank you so much. It was awesome being with you today. You're absolutely incredible for following Debbie because she is such a honey. If she has any close, I'd give her a hug from you. I haven't met her in person, but I've seen a lot about her. She's awesome. You are so blessed to be following her. And it's been a privilege for me to be with you. And if you do want to have a chat with me anytime, you can just come on, make an appointment with me. And I'd love to guide you, love to help you. Have an incredible day and God bless. God bless you, Lewis. Thank you so much. Awesome. Talk, soon. Talk soon. Well, who wouldn't want to have him on the show? Thank Did you. you know how nice he was about me. Oh my gosh. So, wow. <laughs> Live shows. What can just, I tell I'm just, you? I'm just grateful that we made it happen. So, you know, in life, it's live, right? I, I Lately, I've been getting nervous before the show because I don't know what's going to happen. So, anywho, um, what's up with your health? Let's figure it out. Let's learn some more. And I will have him on at a later date. We'll get the StreamYard stuff fixed up for him so he doesn't have technical difficulties next time. We will have another brilliant show with him actually here, looking at you, talking to you, showing his products or things that he uses. Um, he is amazing. Oh, thank you too, Trish. Thank you, Sean. Great information. I agree. Thanks. I saw. Um, yes. Thank you, too, for being here. And um, I saw Clayton on here. Uh, Clayton Ratcliffe. I saw and Mickey. It was wonderful. You guys and Doug Pryor and uh, my sister, Vicky and Jason Freeman. I was on his show earlier. We just bouncing around. It's like a podcast hop. So anyway, I so appreciate all of you being here and even hanging tough with us while we have the phone up in the up in the computer for volume. So have a great rest of your week. I will see you this time next week on Wednesday. Ori Spado may be feeling better and be on next week. If not, I'll have another guest. We'll figure it out. Have a great night, y'all. That floats around me, keeping me.